Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. Um, I'm actually here from EdChat Interactive. We're using the Shindig platform uh, to present the second in our series of three smart technology series um, based on uh, the books of uh, Angela Myers. Um, in this session, we're going to explore how to accelerate the genius within and around you uh, by a series of conversations and exercises to increase confidence, self-awareness, and your students' ability to develop strong personal brand uh, with templates, case studies, and powerful examples. Um, after the lesson or during the lessons, um, we'll have uh, We'll have somebody from SMART who's going to be actually leading the session tonight. Uh, Kelly Mitch is going to be leading the session. And because there's a lot of interactive uh, capabilities of Shindig, I just want to walk you a little bit through Shindig and what we're trying to do with, with EdChat Interactive. So um, we're using, you know, EdChat Interactive is a way for educators to share best practices. But we wanted to do these in something similar to a webinar format, but to provide a lot more interactivity so that you'll learn not just by watching, but you'll be able to interact with each other, you'll be able to reflect, and you'll be able to participate, which are the same things that you do with your classes, but we're now replicating that in an online session uh, through uh, the good graces of smart technologies. And let me just show you how to do that by using the, um, the Shindig platform. So what you should see on your screen is, um, you know, you see avatars of different people, you see slides, you see me up there. Next to your avatar, you see a menu of different choices. Uh, one of those choices is uh, a text chat window. One allows you to ask questions. One allows you to raise your hand. And then, of course, there's a mute microphone. So let, let me go through those. Uh, first of all, um, I'd if you click, if you were to click on the text chat, what you're going to get is a dialog box. Let me expand this a little bit. Um, you get a dialog box that looks a little bit like this. And you see on the bottom of it is an area where you can type something in. There's an X in the top right hand corner of it that allows you to close it. You can grab the top and move it. You can grab the actually the lower right hand corner of it and resize it. What I'd like you to do tonight is um, is right now is to why don't you introduce yourself where are you from and what do you want to learn tonight and uh everybody you know you'll be sharing that with the other people here uh, i will say that the one person who can't see that is me so uh kelly will be able to see it and she's the person who's going to be leading us tonight um and angela is here so and she'll be able to see that also and they'll be able to tailor what they say to um you know to the, the types of things that, that you want to learn. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to uh, to open up that, that dialog box. Again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the avatar that looks like a text box that opens up the dialog box and you can type it in and you can respond to some of the other people there using text. Um, the second way of interacting is through asking questions. And there's a question mark avatar or a question mark menu item underneath your avatar also, uh, those questions go to me, and then I can pass those questions on to Kelly. Uh, and the third item is raising hand. Now, raise hand means that you're trying to get my attention. Uh, there's, there may be times during the session where Kelly says, you know, here this is an interesting point. I'd like to, to find out how you would use this in your class or what questions you have. Um, if you want to come up and talk about it with me, raise your hand. And when she says raise your hand, she doesn't mean go like this. Uh, what she means is click on the raise hand button and then I'll bring you up and you can have a discussion with Kelly. Um, so um, those are three ways of interacting, text chat, asking questions, raising hands to come up on top. And then there's a fourth way of interacting. Uh, there may be times where Kelly says, I'd like you to break into a small group and talk to another person about about you know this question. And uh, when she says that, what she's going to want you to do is to click on the avatar of another person, and then you're going to be able to have a private conversation with that person for a few minutes, and then you'll break apart, and we'll discuss with with some of you you know what you talked about in in your small groups. Um, so those are the different ways that you'll be able to interact. We think that that's going to allow you. 
um, to learn. Well, you you know, I mean, you're all teachers. You know that if you you learn better when you're active. So I'd like to encourage you to take advantage of those different methods, and um, like to point out. Um, and I'm what I left off on this slide, unfortunately, is on April 23rd, we're having the third session in this series, which is going to be acting with and through Collective Genius. Um, and SMART will get you the web address for that one. Um, and then on April 25th, um, on EdChat Interactive, we're going to be having a session where we're going to talk to the author, Matt Farber, um, and uh, other educators who use games in classes um, about teaching with games. And then on May 9th, we're going to have a session about leveraging open educational resources, which is going to be led by uh, Christina Ishmael. And so really, without further ado, let me close this and let me find Kelly. OK, Kelly. So and let me bring your slides up at the same time. Um, so we can we can have those and um, and where you know geographically where are you? I am down in San Antonio, Texas, is where I live. So oh, wow. I'm down in the south. So, so okay, so I'm gonna about to get jealous. <laughs> I was just talking today with somebody from Minnesota, and I'm up in uh, north in in New York State. Here it's about uh, thirty eight degrees. <laughs> It's, it's going down to 27 tonight is what I heard. Uh, what's oh, the temperature bird. where you are? Um, you don't want to know what my temperature is. <laughs> uh, okay. I knew it's, I'd be jealous. It, it, it's, it's about 78, 79. Oh, oh that's beautiful. So, okay. Yes. Okay. But, but when you're up at 108 degrees in July, I'm going gonna, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna to feel better. So Exactly. Because uh, it's um, – it's you know, with the humidity and everything that, you know, adds on to what the temperature is. It can, it can be sweltering, but you know, that's why you get ready to either be inside or find a place that has a pool. <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> one of the two, okay. one of the two. Okay. So, so I'm going to enhance right. the slides. I'm going to pull myself down and um, you'll just tell me when to advance the slides. And if you need me to come up okay. and, and talk, I'll uh, let me know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. So, uh, welcome to part two of uh, the Genius Matters for us. Um, previously, Angela spoke back in March, and we did a lesson with um, the first group of series, the first lessons um, about accepting your genius. Uh, Stella and Julie, were either one of you able to utilize um, that portion in your classrooms or? Um, is this the first part that you you know are interested in learning and stuff? Because if you have a few questions about the first lesson, I'd like to answer a couple of those first. Um, otherwise, I will move into the next section of the series. Stella or Julie, if you have anything, I guess you can either um, you can put it in the raise hand or put it in the ask question, um, and then Mitch can let me know. Because the first part of with uh, Angela's series of the accept your genius. So what she's done is she's really built a framework that helps us really tap into the kids and find, okay, what is important to them and what should we be gathering from them? And knowing that we, you know, students have a genius that we have to tap into. Um, you know, we don't want them to struggle. We, you know, we want them to identify, you know, some of those geniuses there. So in the first series, one of the most important parts is um, building that genius notebook. And in this next lesson, you're going to see that I really refer to that genius notebook um, and finding and being able to record and stuff. So one of the pieces in the first lesson we really wanted the kids to have that open-ended, you know, to identify, you know, what does the word genius mean to them? You know, how do they, you know, define what the genius is and what, you know, where is it from within? Um, sometimes for kids, they don't think that they're genius. And it could be as simple as that, you know, I'm a really good artist or, you know, I'm a good mathematician. Those could be things that are their genius. Um, so knowing that kids sometimes they're shy and they don't think they think the word genius might mean something different, but yet every one of them has a genius within. 
um, and being able to find that and accepting that, hey, I do have a genius um, and going from there. So Mitch, did Stella or Julie say anything yet? I guess not. Okay. So um, a couple of the other things too that were covered in the first section was, um, you know, really having the kids look beyond finding um, what each other has in the genius and what are those things that makes them themselves. One of the activities we had in the first lesson was building a house and what are all of our genius pieces that help us build that house. Um, one of them may have been being helpful, being kind, um, and kind of going from there. So um, I'm going to assume that uh, Julie and um, Stella, you don't have any questions yet. So we'll go ahead and move on to the new lesson. So the new lesson for accepting your genius, one of the pieces that uh, Angela talks about is really looking into our hearts. And what piece I did with that was, okay, how do we really have the kids look into what's going on into their hearts? And so in the book, you'll find that Angela refers to making a heart map um, and really kind of seeing all the pieces. So what I've done is in notebook, I made this slide. So again, here's where I want you to bring out those genius notebooks and have the kids record in there is that in the dice here, it has different questions to make them really think about, you know, what people do, uh, people have it help them to uh, improve or what, who's important to them. So I did a series of questions. And what I'm asking the students to do is where they will go ahead and roll this dice three times and find those questions and then really think about those answers before they put them into their genius notebook. So again, really giving them that think time and then being able to record. So that's one of the activities for awakening my heart. And again, it's in the second section of Angela's book because we want them to look outside um, and then also look inside their heart. You know, what's there? What are the things that they see? Um, and, and other pieces you could have them draw instead of writing in their uh, genius notebook. Maybe it's drawing a picture. Maybe if I'm a good baker, you know, and that's one thing that's important to me. Or if it's a teacher who's been important to me, I may draw, you know, something that uh, relates to my teacher. So again, this is open for the kids. Um, we want to tap into them and not just, oh, you have to do it this way. It's whatever makes them comfortable in their genius notebooks. Okay, Mitch, if you can go to the next slide. So one of the next pieces is, is my passion, my heart. So again, going with um, the book that Angela has written and stuff is really kind of tapping into that. And the piece here is we want to use a shout it out with them on, you know, how does digging deep into your heart break influence our actions or behaviors? What's great about using Shout It Out is I can turn off the student names so that way I don't know, the students watching don't know who has put what answer. And in this case, this would be one of those times where I would turn off the student names and just have that off to the side for me. But here, the students are then able to share openly, you know, what are those influences uh, for actions and behaviors that may have been influenced on them and you know what are their actions that they take so letting them really dig into their hearts and think about you know what is going on what has what actions have I taken what behaviors have I shared that type thing so again letting them think about it and giving their insight and not holding um, their name on here I think are is a couple of the important pieces if Mitch, if you'll go to the next page. So one of the other activities is we really want the kids to think about, okay, what, what would it be like in the day of the life of whatever their career wants to be? So in this case, I've just taken a, a video of the daily life of an astronaut. You know, if, if the career that I want it to go down to, you know, what would my daily life be? What would I have to do you know, to be an astronaut? Would it be school? And letting the kids think about, you know, what they're wanting to do and what it's going to take to get there. And then once they're there, how exciting to have that life of they're reaching their goal and, you know, sharing their knowledge with other people, whether it's students, 
um, colleagues, you know, anybody who's there interested. So again, this video first, you would just have the students watch. And then Mitch, if you go to the next page, please. Here again, I brought in the dice and I want the kids to, again, identify that career goal that they have. And answer two or three of the questions, it, you know, again, depending on your time, your focus um, for this, if it's, you've got a short amount of time to use, then you may only have them do two questions. But again, you know, what do you plan to do to pursue this job? What are the things that you're having to um, do to get there, to get to the day in the life of your, what you want to do in the future? Again, having them look within themselves because their dreams are important and we want to tap into those. Okay, Mitch, if you go to the next page. So then the next thing is, is really thinking about me. Okay, what's affecting me? So one of the things that Angela refers to is the millennials. So in the millennials, we have um, where in this video, it, this is a very short clip. Um, so Angela refers to the article and the full uh, video of this. And it's again, talking about the me, me, me generation. So what I've done in this uh, slide is I've given you the short version of the video, along with where it says full article, if you click on that, that does go out to the website. And it does have the piece of, you know, the me and the full uh, generation of the millennials. So this is showing, you know, what's going on? How do some of these millennials think? And are they right? Is it really what we should be thinking about um, in the this generation? So depending on the age of the students, you might have the students read the article, you might watch the video, you may have to read the article to them. Again, depending on the age of your students is going to be where you go. So then from there, we want them to think about a few things. And Mitch, if you go to the next page, one of the pieces is we want to ask them to think about, does it fairly describe their generation? And I put a yes, why, and a no, why. So I want them to think about in that article, did it go and truly describe their generation today? Is it what they feel they're entitled to? Is it the pieces that are important to them? Um, have them listen to each other's views after they put them up here and, you know, express that information in a way that feels it's important to them. And I don't want to say defend, but again, challenge sometimes to see, you know, why, you know, ask them more questions, continue to probe them on, you know, why do they feel that? Yes, it is. It describes their generation completely or no, it doesn't. So either one, you know, really letting the kids think about and defending um, that generation. Uh, another thing is, is, you know, what are some of the problems that the students would be facing for this generation? Those are some other uh, discussion questions you can ask during um, this activity with the article. What are the pieces that uh, they're faced with and how are they going to solve it? How are they going to solve that generation um, of the me, me, me? Okay, Mitch, if you can go to the next one. And are there any questions so far, Mitch? Okay, I'm guessing not. So on this one, nope, no questions. Excellent. Okay, so on this one, I thought about doing something a little different. Um, again, trying to use our smart lab activities and our tools that we have within Notebook, but challenging you as a teacher and challenging the kids. So this is a label reveal that I could just do a simple label reveal and have it identify different parts. So what I did on this label reveal though is I, I'm behind the question marks, there's actually questions. So I want the kids to read this poem about genius. I have nothing to declare except my genius. Okay, so I want them to think about that first. And then from there, you can click on the two questions. And so the first question under the word declare is actually going to ask them, um, sorry, let me get my question here. It's actually going to ask them, what does the word declare mean to them? So having them identify what does that word mean? And it could just be the word, the word in the poem associated with the word genius, but having them think about it. This is where they can do a think pair share. They can do a partner sharing. You've got a couple different options of how you have that. Again, you can bring out their genius notebooks and have them work in the genius notebook on sharing these pieces of their thoughts. The other question that's tied to the word genius 
I asked the kids, you know, what does this look like in their school? What does genius look like in their school? So it could be, you know, a teacher has a genius because they're a math mathematician. It could be one of my classmates is a great artist. Again, having them think about what does that look like in their school, their surroundings, because there's so many kids that have geniuses. And really, again, this kind of ties back to the first lesson that we did, where the students were watching a couple of the videos, um, the one about Darcy, and they had to identify, you know, what were all of Darcy's geniuses. So again, pulling back the first lesson kind of into this, that now looking at all of my classmates, looking at my teachers, looking at the people at my school, what are their geniuses? And what does it look like? So you can, again, have an open discussion. You can put this into a shout it out or have them record it into their genius notebooks. Any of those activities would work, um, again, depending on your time, depending on what you have going on and how much uh, collaboration and communication you can spend doing this um, activity is important. Okay, Mitch, if you can go to the next one. Oh, there's a couple questions. Um have or be a genius. It's everyone's genius. Okay. So Mitch is asking, can anyone have or be a genius? Is everyone a genius? Yes. Everyone from what, um, from Angela's book, she shares that everyone does have a genius and that it's a matter of us having the students, having us teachers help the students identify their geniuses and find it. And again, it's not just one genius. Sometimes you know, some of us have 10 geniuses and one, and some of us only have five. It could be from knowing how to sew. It could be from being that mathematician. It can be um, being a great cook. So really, again, kind of going back into looking deep into their heart, digging deep into their heart about okay, what are all those geniuses that I have as a, as a teacher and how do I find those geniuses in my students? So it is important that, yes, every student does have a genius and we need to identify that. And the other question is, um, what if they think they don't have a genius or they aren't a genius? Again, hopefully uh, my previous answer will help that, again, we may have to help them. We have to give them those guiding tools to identify, you know, what is a genius? And anything can be a genius from the simple of writing a poem to, um, finishing a complete sentence. It depends on the age level to help make that understanding of what a genius looks like and what they, how they can identify that genius. But everybody has some sort of genius in them. And it's just, it's our job as educators to really help guide them to find their geniuses. Okay. So on this next slide, um, again, I'm trying to use a lot of our smart lab and change it up. So in this case, this is just a flip out um, activity. So in, um, in the book, uh, sorry, just let me, uh, Angela goes and refers to the I am, and we want the kids to identify, you know, things that are important to them. I am a teacher. I am a mother. I am a friend, that type thing. But then also breaking it up and I am a writer. I am a um, happy, I am most happy when I'm working with students in the classroom, those type things. So in this activity, I first have the 10 flip out cards that I would take one at a time and have the kids write a 10 line poem. This is where they start to think about, you know, what am I? I am a mom. I am a friend. I am a listener. Then the other part to this is if you look over on the right hand side where the magic hat is underneath the star, I have put some additional questions to kind of help guide the kids through this poem. Plus afterwards, some other questions that kind of let them think about how they're feeling. So one of the questions is, you know, how did hearing your poem make you feel? Because we want them to think about, you know, how is their heart feeling? Well, hearing their poem, it may make them happy. It may make them sad even, you know, if they put certain things on there. Um, but again, really having them take a deeper look into what did that poem mean and what does it mean to them and how it makes their heart feel. And then another question is we kind of talk about, you know, the process of the poem, you know, does it help them unleash their genius, you know, and how did they, how did they feel when that happened? So just knowing that, again, it's all about them and 
finding their genius and that there is no wrong answer to it. Um, yes, exactly. We want to make the students as comfortable as possible. Um, and, you know, doing this and how, how does that help? It sometimes helps, especially those kids who don't want to contribute. And that's why with this activity, with the flip out, you may get different kids to come up and either they can share out verbally or again, come back to their genius notebook and share, you know, what their genius is, but really spending the time to help them find that genius is going to be one of the key pieces. And it, it kind of goes back to that first um, lesson that we've built uh, with Angela that, you know, finding it, accepting it, and then here we're going to accelerate it um, and really work with that genius. So making sure that they're comfortable and they feel safe to share what their geniuses are um, because that's important. Okay. So Julie says, um, I used to use this in the classroom. Okay. So she's providing a link, um, that definitely will help with feeling and stuff. So excellent. Thank you, Julie, for sharing. Um, again, trying to get the kids to be comfortable and enjoyable. Okay, Mitch, if you can go to the next page. So here is another piece that kind of, again, we want the kids to look within to see who do they think has the biggest effect on how much you learn. Now, here's the piece. What's great about this activity is it's a rank order, but there is no wrong answer. And that's what I love about leaving this so open-ended for the kids is that I've gone and said, okay, maybe for me, you know, who did the biggest effect on how much I learn. Maybe it was my peers. Maybe it was society. But I can put these in an order from biggest impact to least. But it, it's my choice of how I position them. And the way I position it is not wrong from Julie's, Stella's, Kristen, anybody else who has participated and done this. Each of us gets to be unique, which again comes back to our genius. We all get to be geniuses to identify, you know, who are the people who affect us. And that's why it's important for the kids to know in this activity, the way I do it may be different than the way you do it but it's okay. So again, kind of coming back to what Mitch was saying about making them feel comfortable in this activity, making them feel comfortable about identifying their genius. So it's, it's okay to change it up. Some people may put society at the end. Some people may put um, their parents at the beginning, either one. Okay. So if we can go to the next slide. Okay. So then another one is we're trying to find self-awareness. So in this activity, what I did for the self-awareness is we want the kids to be able to um, recognize their feelings, their strengths, weaknesses, um, and do some, you know, self-reflecting. In the book, again, Angela goes and talks about having that time and thinking about what are some of the tools that people use every day, but in how does it affect our self-awareness? So in this activity, um, on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a pull tab, you would pull that out. And on that, I've got um, some directions that will tie back to some of your curriculum. So how you can relate it, you know, it's a curriculum connection. And then I also have two different dice, one die has um, the images, and then the other dice has words, again, asking how you're feeling, if you go on the word one, I'm feeling, and the kids have to finish it, this reminds me of, um, and then the images, they can look at and tell what that image reminds them of also. So again, using the notebook software to bring in self-awareness and let them think about how they're feeling. And as they get older, yes, the skills um, that they need will take a little bit more control over their learning their learning and their lives. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I did a second self-awareness. Um, Mitch, if you can go to the next page, please. Oh, I guess. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. So I did a listen loudly. So in um, Angela's book, one of the next sections is listen loudly. And so in this one, what I did is I just took um, a quote 
And I wanted the kids to bring up the answers, bring up the words into this uh, quote and just kind of listen to each other. In this case, you know, listening to each other is very important. Again, I could have added um, the hat that had some additional questions, or you can just, you know, verbally ask the kids after, you know, how are they feeling about this? How do they feel when they're listening to each other discuss um, thoughts and, you know, when they're digging into finding what's in truly in their heart? So you have some options there. Um, What did you learn from a storytelling activity? Having them share their feelings, their thoughts. So in this activity, there's just a few things you could do. Um, Again, you can extend it. There's some questions in Angela's book that you can refer to, or if you want it to make it easier, you could put that magic hat off to the right-hand side and have those questions there. Okay, Mitch, if you can go to the next slide. So one of her last activities in this section is talking about seeing clearly. So Angela refers to this um, video of people looking at each other through their eyes and you just, they're sitting there and they're looking at each other. Um, So you have a young man looking at an older lady and you know, what are they feeling? What are they thinking? What does that experience look like and feel like when, you know, they're doing that? So what I've done here is I've provided the video that um, Angela refers to in her book. And then, Mitch, if you go to the next page, please. So what I did on this one is this is called a chalkboard splash. So it's just another way of getting that total participation by all students. So that way anybody can participate in this activity. So the first thing I would do is it's a shout it out and it's completely open. Um, And if you're not sure of what a chalkboard splash is, Mitch, will you go one page uh, forward, please? I did give some directions about what a chalkboard splash is and what it might, you know, um, look like that type thing. But again, it comes back to that total participation, wanting students to all participate before an assessment, before an activity, all of that. Mitch, can you go back to the previous page? So on this shout it out, what I've done is, again, I did use the magic hat on the far right hand side. And now I've added some additional questions to talk about that seeing, um, seeing clearly video, you know, we're the second because you want the kids to do this multiple times, then after watching that video, then you want them to do it. You want them to try it and see how they feel. So again, giving them some questions about, you know, how did you feel after the first time, the second time, was it easier or harder? Um, Just kind of really making them think deeply, you know, what was the experience for them? You know, how did they, how did they feel about that experience? And just really looking at, you know, what did it take? How did they feel? And again, looking into that heart. Okay, Mitch, if you can go to, um, I guess, and then go one more. So what I did um, to wrap up is I put in those dice. So I've got at the last couple slides, again, are some resources for you. Um, How do you insert a dice? And then the next one, and then how do you modify that dice? Uh, Mitch, we go one more, please. And then how do you insert a pull tab? Again, these are just some additional resources for you to add to the lesson of what I had created. And will you go one more, please? Um, This last resource page, again, is to our software, to the downloads, how to download uh, Angela's book, The Genius Matters, the direct link for the lesson. And if you're not an exemplary educator, how to become an exemplary educator. But these are all links that you have. Now, please know that this lesson does come with uh, teacher notes. So... All of every one of the slides has directions of what you're going to do, what's on it, all of that. So that will also be um, attached. It's in the attachments of this notebook file. But what we will do afterwards is we will have uh, a link sent out to you with this notebook file. So you will be able to um, utilize it if necessary, if you're uh, wanting to use it. All right. Angela, is there anything you would like to add to this lesson? Again, this was from your second section of um, 
the Accelerate Your Genius. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, Kelly, you're doing a great job. Um, no, there's nothing that I would add except that, you know, each, even though we're presenting the lessons as almost like do this and here's something you can do. One lesson is an igniter for conversation over weeks. So just, mm -hmm. just literally one of the lessons is, is, um, an exercise in its own self-awareness and its own development. And if you see them more as a process and not just, even though they're created as lessons, a process, um, I think it, it takes pressure off that each one of them doesn't have to be spectacular. It's the, it's the journey that's spectacular with kids, with ourselves, with our schools, with our communities. So I'm just grateful that you're having the conversations with each other. Yes, excellent. And you're right. It is, you know, again, hopefully you can spread this out and be able to have the time to have those discussions and go through those processes yeah. instead of having that quick, oh my goodness, I only have 15 minutes yeah. to get this in. I know. We've got to get on you that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a fun thing is when, oh, I have to do this, that type thing, but yet the kids yeah. don't get anything out of it. And, and that's where we really want to think about it and use that genius notebook, like you were saying, and, and having yeah. them think about the process and that journey. So 100%. excellent. excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. You bet. I don't know okay. So, uh, I know Stella, I'm do you have any questions? Stella, um, okay, Mitch is coming back. No, I, um, I think, you know, I, you, you had the, the one more set of information if, if you wanted, I could, I could bring that up also, but it, it was seeming to me that, um, the whole purpose of doing all of these, you know, exercises and, and the questions is to get the kids to be more aware of who they are, what the environment mm -hmm. is and, um, and how they can take control over their lives and, and, and learning and, um, and that each one is special. Exactly. And, and that is the thing that we really need to tap in is there are those students who, depending on their situations and stuff, they may not feel special or um, that they have no genius. So again, taking them on this journey to identify and find them and know that they are geniuses in many different ways. Yeah, it, it seems to me like if I if I know that I am special and then I attempt something and it doesn't work out, it's like, OK, this just didn't work out. But if I if mm -hmm. I if we if and if, so if we can ignite that that feeling in the kids, we're doing we're giving them a gift. But if we're if I'm a child and I don't feel that I'm special and then I do something wrong, I feel it's me. I'm bad. And so what we're trying to do is to get them to externalize, hey, look, when you do things, you know, over time you're going to get better. But you as a person, you're a special individual. And, that, and that's what exactly. We're, oh, and there's a question here. So uh, from Stella. Um, OK, so. So Stella says uh, she would love to add a shout out to lessons after these initial lessons, asking how they have shown their genius today. So I'm wondering, uh, Stella, would you mind, um, you know, uh, maybe, would you mind if I brought you up? It doesn't look like you have video, but maybe you have audio. And so I'm going to see if I can bring you up also so you can discuss what maybe a little bit of what you meant. So I'm going to bring you up. And if you don't, then we won't be able to hear you and we'll bring you back right back down. But if somehow <laughs> or other you have audio, uh, Stella, uh, are you there? Can you, can you, um, can you hear us? Can you, can you hear us or can you talk or darn? Um, okay. So user connecting issues. So unfortunately that didn't work, but it, there's an interesting comment, um, mm -hmm. you know, or, question um that uh after these initial lessons uh there's some great lessons um you know allowing the students to show their genius and those 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 are great lessons in the book right exactly and again you know showing them that there are no wrong answers to identifying those geniuses and again it could be as simple as i'm a writer today my genius was i actually wrote you know a poem a story 
whatever, you know, any of it. So yeah, I like that idea, Stella, is that going ahead and doing that shout it out afterwards, I think would be very powerful. So again, we can then have that discussion and go down that journey of letting them share where their geniuses are today from at the beginning too. So excellent idea. And I can add those in. And it, it, as, as, oh, there's another, sorry. Oh, she's having, yeah. She, <laughs> Stella was saying she having, <laughs> she's having some tech problems. Um, so, you know, it, you know, when you say that there's no wrong answer, one of the interesting things to me is, like, so what, is, what if a student gives an answer that clearly, well, you know, like, let's say I'm a student and I say, you know, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Okay. You know, that's my goal in life. Now, mm-hmm. you know, how do you respond to that? Because responding to it and saying, hey, look, you know, there's the chance of you being a professional basketball player is practically zero. That's true to a certain extent. But now we're making mm-hmm. the student wrong. So how do we respond in a way when a student says something like that, that doesn't make them wrong, but, um, you know, but gives I them still a feeling be- of self-worth? Right. I think the biggest piece there is you have to be positive with your students because, you know, there are pieces that they have that negativity. And I guess maybe part of it is me, myself, is that I always wanted to encourage that. So if a student said, I'm going to be a basketball player, it's okay. So what do we need to do to help you get to achieve that goal? What are, what are the processes that you need to achieve that? Is it, we need to have, help you practice dribbling, help you practice shooting again, help them then identify what are the steps they need to take to reach that goal, reach that dream. Because to me as a teacher, as an educator, I should help them and assist them in any way I can along with encouraging them to, they, I mean, they have to identify what are the things that they need to do to get there. So again, mm-hmm. helping and being that positive influence and encourager, I think is important. Okay. And Barbara had her hand raised. So I'm thinking, Barbara, you, you, you had something to share. But before you do, I just want to, I want to give a little bit more of a shout out to uh, Stella, uh, because what she brought up is that, you know, we're treating these as if these were separate lessons. But to the extent that we can embed this into everything we do, we're help inspiring greatness in the kids all the time. And Stella, I thought that was a, that's a great point. So thank you. Okay, Barbara, exactly. you're on. So, yeah. So as I'm listening, and I am familiar with um, the Genius Matters lessons and whatnot to a pretty good extent, but I think there's like a balance, perhaps a pendulum swing. To is, tell me if you disagree, but that. The matter of finding genius within a child, within any student of any age, within any person, is is not solely based on self-esteem. It is that there everyone has a contribution, and whatever their desire or dream may be is not necessarily what they will 100% succeed at. It's a matter of having them understand that they have value and to dip into themselves to find it, and that's a deep journey as a child gets older. But when it comes to that feel good, add a boy, you're a genius. I think there's a there's a something I haven't heard yet that I think bears being clarified in terms of not everyone is a genius. This is not supporting the everybody gets a trophy um, mentality. Right. I understand it, um, and I just think that there it is something about the self-worth that there is an essential nature in every person that has been there since birth that needs to be drawn out. That isn't necessarily what the child is saying they want to be or they want to do or they want to achieve. Um, doesn't mean that you can't achieve your goals if you set your mind to it, but there's something in the discussion that I feel just needs the pendulum needs to perhaps uh, come to center a little bit from that attaboy, you can do it, everything's going to mm-hmm. be okay thing. I don't know. Your reaction. No, I think you're right. I mean, again, I think it is a journey. It is a process that we need to go through with them. And it is that deep discussion and having them look inside. And you're right. Again, everybody's not going to be successful on what their dreams are. Because like Mitch said, you know, we're not all going to have those uh, basketball players and stuff. So it is identifying the self-worth and, you know, that they're a contributor to society that things that they're doing, you know, they're going to contribute to make, hopefully make our society better. So. And I challenge you a little bit, you know, I, cause I agree with a lot of what you said in the sense that we, that, 
you know, these participation trophies or that everybody has to be a star and everything is, is, is wrong. But I, I think that, that when we establish a connection with a kid, we can almost, you know, always find something about that kid mm -hmm. that's extraordinary and is celebrating what about that kid makes that kid extraordinary that we're real, that is what we're really trying to do. And I think that's what Angela's, Angela's message is. Um, that's what I would say is uh, it's, it's not about that every kid has to be a star in everything that they right. do, but it's finding the, the one thing in, or the few things in that kid that really make them special. Exactly. And, and one of the things, one of the things I always did um, in my classroom is I found those different things to celebrate for each one because everybody is unique and, you know, and I'm not the type of person that everybody deserves a ribbon or a trophy type thing. But again, look again, thinking about that self-worth and letting them uh, see that they're worth something that they're going to contribute to the rest of their classmates and the rest of society. So, um, yeah, no, I, I just, I think I made, I made the point. I just think okay. that, there's something about an individual's um, understanding that they're essential to the world, and yep. and that it is necessarily identified as a single, a single uh, aspiration that they have. Is, um, yeah, sounds like we're all in basic agreement. So that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank Excellent. you. Awesome. All right. Um, does Stella have any other questions or comments? Thoughts? Um, no, I think we 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 uh, covered her her questions and. Um, I don't know, and maybe uh, Angela, if you want to raise your hand, if you have some some thoughts on the discussion that we just had, um, I'll bring you back up. Uh, but it's it sounds like we, you know, we covered the material, right? Yes, that sounds good. So that's good. Okay. And then um, our next session is in about is is in just a little over two uh, two weeks, right? Two weeks. It's on the the twenty third. Right. Exactly. Um, and April. 20th. And so you'll send on out Monday this time. Okay, you'll send out the instructions. Uh, via smart and um, I'll, 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 I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Angela, for coming. Thank you all of you for coming and we'll, we'll be making a copy of this um, and um, I'll sign off and actually I'll, I'll, I'll be back on in about, in about an hour um, to talk about um, uh, the the backlash to kids using technology and um, what research says about that, uh, about do, our kids using too much technology today. So uh, Mitch Weisberg signing off for EdChat Interactive and Smart Technology. Uh, see you all soon. Bye.